Fans, next time you need tickets to a game or concert, head to StubHub and discover why millions of fans make it their go-to site for finding great seats, even on the day of the event and even if it's sold out. The only question is, where do you want to sit? StubHub! The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. He must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound. Like a rusty steak knife cutting through a well aged steak. No. 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 Here's Bill Simmons. Yeah. Welcome to the BS Report Wednesday afternoon here on the West Coast, and we could not resist calling our buddy Jacko, diehard Yankee fan. We have not talked to him since the last time he appeared in this podcast. Since then, the Yankees have collapsed. I don't know if it's a semi-collapse or a full collapse, but there's been some collapsing. We're in a call will work right now. Complex litigation, this is John. Oh, Johnny! Wow. Yeah. Hey, now. Do you That's smell a- that... The- it smells like a little bit like like meat spoiling right now. Like when you leave meat outside too long, you smell that spoiling smell. That's the 2012 Red Sox. Yeah, baby, there you go, there you go. Yeah, hang your hat on that. The spoiler rolls over. Absolutely, fun. I'll hang my hat. I need somewhere to hang my hat. <laughs> Absolutely, it's all you've Let's got. Let's go hang it here. I would do the same thing in your shoes. Absolutely, mm. more power to you. Walk us. We haven't talked to you really in the last uh, I don't know ten days or so. Walk us through. I don't want to call it a collapse, but oh, it's, you can it's, call it a collapse. You can call it a collapse. Oh, okay, let's call oh, it a collapse. Absolutely. All right, let's hear your thoughts on the collapse. Well, it's uh, it's troubling, and it's I, I blame you because, or maybe myself, I guess, because last time we did a podcast, and I I was you know the cock of the walk and and uh, mm. prancing around and saying how I wasn't afraid of anybody in the American League Central, and I wasn't yeah. afraid of anybody in the American League, and. I of all people should know the you know with all the jinxes and reverse jinxes and everything else that I should of all people should know that you never count your chickens before they're hatched and take anything for granted and I did that so I, I apologize to uh, Yankees Nation if such a thing oh Yankees Universe actually I apologize well, they, to the Yankees Universe on, on, that it's my fault I didn't I shouldn't have done that and um, although their collapse really has been has really dates back to the All Star break because I think now they're like twenty seven and twenty nine since the All Star break so. It's you know just what? been a problem. I have a newsflash for you. Yankee yeah. Nation does not accept your apology. <laughs> no, with good reason. I totally. Although, I, you know, since they have collapsed since the All-Star break, and I think that podcast was in August, I can't take full responsibility. But Oh, uh, I, have all the, I have all the data, actually, for you. Oh, you do? All right. Or data. I have the data, too. I have the data, and I have the data. Awesome. Either um, one. We taped the podcast on August 28th, a Tuesday. August 28th, really? Yeah. Seems like it was and longer ago. So that's 15 was, days ago. It was August 28th. All right. And, uh, the next day, they lost in Toronto. Yeah. They hosted the Orioles at home. They lost. They lost two or three to the Orioles. Yeah. They lost two or three to Tampa. Oof. They split the Orioles series, and now they've lost to the Red Sox. They have wow. won exactly four games since the day we posted that podcast. And lost how many? And they have lost one, like two, four three, and four, five, six, seven, four and eight. You're four and eight. Four and since eight. Since the day wow. after that podcast, yeah. But this, they've been hideous since before that time, though, so I, I can't take full culpability here. What's they've it really like been to, pathetic since the All-Star break. What's it like when uh, when your most reliable starter is Hideki Kuroda? <laughs> it's true. Well, that's the thing that really has, has not been written about enough, I don't think, is that they have Sabathia, the big horse, and they're supposed to ride him, and he's been terrible. He's been brutal. I mean, I, I read on Twitter, I think it was John Heyman from CBS, so there's you know, there's reports that he's hurt, but if you're hurt, then don't pitch. If he's pitching, I don't want to hear excuses about, oh, he's really secretly hurt. The Red Sox always try to pull that. Like when Lester has it down here, they're like, I think he's nursing a secret injury. If you're out there pitching, well, whatever. If you're out there, (laughs) if you're out there pitching, you're not hurt. So I don't want to hear excuses. When you're supposed to be the man, you have a big contract, you're the ace, you know, you're supposed to be our Verlander, our Strasburg. You got to carry the team when it's in the doldrums. And he hasn't, he hasn't lived up to that. 
I mean, you know, and I'm not going to make excuses about injuries, but, you know, Pettit was a big part of their rotation after Pineda got hurt in spring training or showed up hurt in spring training. So that, you know, Pettit got the line drive off the shin, and he's been out for months now. That hurt their rotation because now you have David Phelps on a regular basis in the rotation who's not helping anybody. So, they're yeah, their pitching has been – they've had the same problem for 10 years, basically, even though they won a World Series three years ago. They can't get a clutch hit, and they can't, they don't have pitching when it counts. Mm. It's been a it's been a continuing problem. So, I mean, I don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs at this point. Whether they do or not, I don't think they have. They're going on a deep run. So it's it's all you know really moot. I'm really disgusted and troubled and every every other word you can think of. It could be worse. You could be a Red Sox fan. Yeah, that's what I have to hang my hat on. At least we're, we're doing a lot of hat hanging today. It's my yeah. phrase today, apparently. Uh, at least I'm happy with that. Like I know the Red Sox aren't going to win the World Series, and they're 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 a complete implosion. So that makes me happy, but not as happy as it would if the Yankees were coasting into the playoffs. And you know that would make me much happier, clearly. But yeah, I, I'm at least at least I can console myself with the fact that the Red Sox are much 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 worse. <laughs> Could turn in about nine more muches. Yes, yes. Did it make you happy when? Bobby V left out uh, Clay Buckholtz for 121 pitches the other night. I did, I did. And <laughs> Thanks, I enjoyed, Bobby V. I enjoyed driving home from work and listening to the replay of the uh, Bobby V threatening to punch Glenn Ordway in the mouth interview, which just was so crazy to listen to. It, you can't yeah. make up how crazy it was. Yeah, I actually, I, I broke a lifelong rule never to listen to WI again and, yeah. uh, and listen to that. Interview and I actually thought Bobby Va- Bobby V sounded a little bit deranged. He sounded completely deranged. I'm really sounded worried deranged. about Bobby V at this point. I mean, I hope there's somebody like watching him and keeping an eye on him because this season it couldn't have gone more horribly. I mean, I'm really worried about the guy's health. Like, what's going to happen? Remember in Castaway when Tom Cruise made friends when uh, Tom Hanks made friends with the volleyball. Yeah. And then he started really, really having long conversations with the volleyball, and then he got <laughs> mad. He threw the volleyball, and the volleyball almost floated away, and he was crying, and he found it. He brought it back. His pop- yeah. That's what Bobby V sounded like in that interview. Yeah. Well, he Bob, sounded he, like a crazy person who was talking to a volleyball. He, oh, totally. Yeah. And it's just his, his mannerisms or his, his inflections in his voice when he yeah. said, I want to punch you, and he did that weird ha-ha like a complete insane person, yeah. which just was Wildly out of context and made no sense. It, oh my god, it was really, it was really actually, driving home listening to it. It actually, he sounded like you would have thought he was drunk, except he wasn't slurring his words. Which yeah, was, it was like a drunk person who wasn't slurring words. Yeah, who, he, or or somebody who had just had a concussion that hadn't been diagnosed yet. It was just <laughs> rambling and weird. <laughs> Once he gets fired or resigns or is mercifully put down or whatever, I I cannot wait for his either tell-all book or tell-all interview with, you know, Carl Ravitch on Baseball Tonight, where he yeah. just unburdens himself and, and throws everyone in the Red Sox organization under the bus and finally tells the truth. That's the one well, thing I, I have to look forward to in the postseason. I'm sure they're going to scapegoat him, and they already tried a little bit in the Sports Illustrated piece that Tom Verducci wrote. I like Tom Verducci, but I'm still waiting for somebody to talk to all three of these owners in a piece and then not skew the piece against whoever the three owners have decided to blame this time. Around. Right, whoever they're going to point their finger at, right. It, it's pretty interesting that uh, that really the finger was not pointed toward the three owners at all. No. no and especially when you think like Tom Werner already did this in San Diego, right? Everybody in San Diego hates Tom Werner. Oh, so I didn't he, realize that. He, fire sa- he did the fire sale thing okay. on the Padres. And then, uh, you know, Lucchino left, I think, Baltimore on bad terms, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And then John Henry basically the flipped, Marlins, right? he flipped Florida into the Red Sox like right. an asset. And now it kind of seems like he's decided the Liverpool asset is a more interesting asset than, than the Red Sox maybe. Well, it has been pointed out that if you were going to put the Red Sox up for sale, a good time to do it is after you get rid of a quarter of a billion dollars in, uh, in future unfunded liability or well, funded liabilities for the team, you know? I have a friend who knows things. Mm-hmm. And this friend told me two weeks ago that the Red Sox were going to get sold this winter. Wow. See, there you yeah. go. But I, I I, wouldn't report that. I'm just saying like – Just the, it's the word on this, the street. People that know This things. person laid out the case for um, the parallels between 
how they kind of cut costs with Liverpool and they and then they cut a ton of costs with the Red Sox. The fact that the Red Sox owners are in a no-win situation now. They won their two World Series. They've kind of, you know, people in, in Boston, I think, locally are on to them at this point. They're yeah. Taking that franchise as far as they can go. And then the other thing is, look at what Tom, what John Henry does for a living. Yeah, like, that's what he does, right? He, he takes he takes declining assets and turns the, and buys them when he thinks they're going to become better assets, and then he flips them. I think that's what that's basically the spirit of his job, right? Well, one thing I learned recently that I read or saw somewhere is that uh, he's on Twitter and he follows like ten or twelve people on Twitter, and all of them are related to Liverpool soccer. The, like he, everybody says in Boston that he is all in on that Liverpool team and has lost interest in the Red Sox. And I've seen a million pictures of his new wife over in London, you know, wearing like opera gloves at the at the yeah. soccer match and you know ri- trying to rival Kate Middleton for you know being the English Rose or whatever. So. Maybe the that's what that, she's into, and he's like, hey, my wife's into the soccer, not the baseball. I won two World Series. Let me get the hell out of here while I can. The part that doesn't make sense, then, is why he didn't spend money on the transfer deadline with Liverpool and instead went the other way. That's the only part I can't figure out. Cause then, yeah, he'd want to build be- up a good team, presumably, in Liverpool. Yeah, if you were looking at it, and you're like, oh, they shed $250 million here, and then they added $100 million here. It's pretty clear what's going on. I mean, the only thing I could think is maybe he it wanted to throw point. people – Maybe he's throwing people off the scent? Yeah, it looks too blatant that way, I suppose. Yeah. And everybody's so like, oh, been yeah. bitching for two years that he's been too focused. In Boston, has been bitching that he's been too focused on soccer in Liverpool. So maybe he didn't want to be that blatant about it. It's – it's uh. Maybe Charles been... Dolan can buy the Red Sox this time. He was the second bidder last time. <laughs> Isn't he dead? <laughs> Is he? I don't, I don't know. know. I'll take him alive or dead, Johnny. <laughs> Either James way, Dolan. He's, maybe James Dolan can do it. Uh, let me tell you something. James <laughs> Dolan would not do well in Boston. Frank McCourt's got some walking around money now. <laughs> the only th- yeah, Frank McCourt and, J- and James Dolan would be the nadir for Red Sox yeah. fans. And we were owned, uh, you know, for years and years by a trust. Exactly. Which is uh, is never good. But yeah, I don't. I have a feeling that 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 when you, when you think about the timing of the Dodgers sale from a few months ago and mm-hmm. what they got, how much more money they got than anyone expected. Right. And then you think about the Red Sox have more assets than the Dodgers did basically. Their, their brand, they have a sure. similar brand. I would even say maybe their brand's a little bit bigger. Um, they, the, the park and the surrounding area around the park is actually a much better situation than Dodger Stadium, which is basically in the middle of nowhere with it. It's a traffic quagmire. Mm-hmm. And then they have their network. The Dodgers have to sell their rights unless they start their own network. They're going to get a crap load of money for it, but ultimately they don't own anything. Right. Um, the Red Sox own their own network, which, you know, they've put terrible programming on, but they still own it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they have Nesson and they own the Boston Globes. They have their own propaganda arm, so it's pretty good. <laughs> they can walk right in. <laughs> they own Al Jazeera. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, could they get $2.5 billion for everything? I don't know. Probably, yeah. I mean, if you're the, after you look at the, if you're the owners of owner of any you know big franchise, be it the Yankees or the Red Sox or or the Cubs just sold recently, I guess, so they probably wouldn't be on the market again. But you have to take a good long look at what the Dodgers got and give yep. things a good long hard look, you know. And obviously, the Dodgers don't didn't feel like they overpaid because they just shelled out all that money for right. Adrian Gonzalez's a salami bat. I actually thought he was going to hit for them, but uh, it hasn't happened. I know but, he's hitting two forty two since the trade, and Beckett's what, like one and two or one and three? Yeah, there's been a lot of murmuring out here too about those guys talking about their Red Sox experience. It sounds like Gonzalez. It's almost like, uh, like he's got uh, post stress traumatic whatever <laughs> PTSD. Post traumatic PTSD. Stress disorder. Like, I, I think like I don't I don't think he was prepared for what it was going to be like to be on a really bad Boston team. Yeah. I don't know if there's any way to prepare for it. You almost have to be built like Johnny Damon or Manny Ramirez and just be a lunatic. He's just sitting in the locker room hugging himself, like rocking back and forth, muttering. Like Private Pile. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I mean, uh, I, I think I, I really think he was a little bit traumatized by the whole thing. And then um, I keep hearing that those guys have been, you know, telling people like how bad the Bobby V experience was. <laughs> And just like every like Francona, I mean, yeah. I know that I know they quit on him last year, but it was the team. There were other reasons that that team kind of self combusted, and I, you know, maybe they had tuned him out 
I don't think they ever stopped liking him as a human being. No. But I think they genuinely disliked Bobby V and still do. I think there's genuine animosity to him. <laughs> That's so great. It's uh, all so, I have. It's all I have to make me happy now in this Yankees collapse. So good. So the, uh, I mean, I'm sure you watch those four Orioles games. On and off, to the extent that I could take it. Yes, I didn't see the one they won, 13 to three, unfortunately, but uh, I, I was out and about. But I, I did see snippets of the other games. Yes. Sounds like you've checked out like the Yankees have. I pretty much have. It's just been really, like, really troubling, a downward spiral. I was all fired. You know, they were, had a 10-game lead. I'm already making postseason plans. I'm looking forward to October. And this collapse just came out of left field and just completely it, it's blindsided me. And, you know, I, I did. I put it on Twitter, and people thought it was troll bait or, or reverse jinx. But, you know, the Orioles have good fans. Peter Angelos is a horrific owner who's murdered yeah. that franchise for 15 years. So... I mean, I, I do find it interesting that now, you know, when the Yankees were down there, Camden Yards was filled with people in orange, white, and black, when for years they were all dressed as Yankee and Red Sox fans. Tickets were very available. But um, that's a good baseball town with a good history, and, you know, they've been bad for 15 years. I used to hate them in the 90s when they were a Yankees rival, but it's kind of like a sick puppy, and now it's grown into a full dog that's happy. I can't, I can't really kick them now and be, be ba- angry about it. They're a good young team. I always liked Showalter because he – you remember when we were in college and the Yankees were pathetic, the, the Stump Merrill years. And yep. Showalter came in and I, he turned them around and changed the face of the franchise. And they were 81 and 81 at 92, and I was popping champagne. So I always liked Showalter. I never wanted him to get fired when he did. And um, Although I can't complain about Tory's success, obviously. But I like Showalter, so I can't really hate on the Orioles. I said this, We had uh... a good experience there at Camden Yards when the – when it first opened and you and I went there and the guy tried to sell us uh, Brady 90210 t-shirts in the parking lot. I got to say, it's one of my big regrets in life that I didn't buy it. <laughs> so me too. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, yeah. I, I should have bought a Brady 90210 t-shirt. That goes for $100 now on eBay. Absolutely. I'm so As long as it's out, not ripped up. Huge yeah, mistake by us. That was the same game that we saw an inside the park home run where the guy who scored got hit in the balls by the throw from the outfield. Mark McLemore. Mark McLemore was lying on the ground, like semi conscious for five solid minutes. That's right. It was also, I think, the hottest sporting event I've ever attended. People literally were being carried out on on, uh, stretchers by paramedics with like heat stroke and heat exhaustion. It was 140 degrees. And they didn't stop Joe House from putting down like 15 kielbasas. That's right. (laughs) <laughs> he was claiming he was sweating out the calories, which made it good as we sat in the uh, in the seats. But so yeah, Thursday night was a rough one for you because that was the roughest Yankee loss of the year, right? The three Mark Reynolds homers, the comeback yeah. to the comeback. Yeah. And at the same time, the Democrats are having their um, final day of the convention. True. What What was the O'Connell House like that day? Well, there wasn't a lot of options on the old television. Believe me, it was it was see, it was on Discovery Channel or the History Channel because there was. <laughs> There was no watching the Yankees, and there was no watching any of the, you know, regular channels. Yeah. So mm. it might have been an early bedtime. <laughs> Turn it in. Might have couple been an early extra, bedtime for Johnny O that night. A couple extra shots of whiskey and then maybe <laughs> turn right in? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I couldn't bring myself to watch the Yankees. I could, and then I, I was, I, because I'm an idiot, I, I did look at my Twitter feed every so often, and they were down big, and then they tied it up. And Ichiro, I guess, hit the three-run homer. And then I started watching it again, only to watch them lose. So that added to my consternation. How was least. your Ichiro? What's it like to watch Ichiro on a daily basis? Well, I was excited by it at first. But, I mean, you know, flashes, wow. of, flashes of his former self. But, I mean, not you know, a few too many ground outs for my taste. Tepid reviews from Jack O. He's good in the field. You know, it's exciting, but... You know, it's it's kind of Willie Mays playing for the Mets era, basically. So Pat you're kind of tired. Behind him. You're tired of seeing him chop it to the left side and get Pretty thrown much. out by a foot. Pretty much. It's enough. gotten old. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Who's yeah? I'm just really, except for Jeter. I mean, Jeter is just so good. It's it's scary, and, and let's hope that that's all. It's just that he's scary good and had a resurgence because that will really finish me if anything ever came out about that. But. I yeah. mean, the guy's having a, an amazing year. He leads the league in hits. He's hitting 320, big hits, clutch hits. I mean, you, you can't say enough. I mean, he literally, he's up there with, you know, Ruth, Gehrig, Mantle, DiMaggio. He's an iconic Yankee. And 
and ten years from now we're gonna we're gonna consider ourselves privileged to have watched him play. No no two ways about it. He's my scrappy binky, believe me. Um, I but, I will say this in defense of the uh, of the Jeter season that has raised some eyebrows. Yes. Um, from a homer standpoint, nothing's changed. They're right. He's usually when Jeter was going at his best, he was in the eighteen to twenty two range, and he has. I'm looking right now. He's got fifteen now. All right, so that's fair. Yeah. Um. On base is 370. I mean, in his prime, he was in the he was always in the 390 to 410 range. Yeah, so he's still a little behind the times there. And then the slugging is 449. You know, in 09 he slugged 465. In 06 he slugged 483. In 04 he slugged 471. He's been really hot since the All Star break. I mean, I know his like yeah. his OPS is almost like at a, a thousand since the All Star break, but. This this is a kind of season like anybody who's been playing fantasy for the last thirty years, you know, like really good players always have that one last good statistical season. Yeah. Usually it was always around like age thirty seven, thirty eight, and then that was it. Then it would go off a cliff. And then the whole P D era happened and that last good season suddenly <laughs> lasted for four <laughs> seasons. Exactly. It screwed everything up. And also the last good season was much better than any other season the guy ever had, which was obviously another red flag. Um, I, I think the season's totally defensible, you know, especially like you think maybe that Minka Kelly relationship was a little debilitating, <laughs> you know, think she was memo from the natural. I like, I'm throwing it out there. Wow. Maybe, maybe it was debilitating for him. Could be, could be. Maybe, he's, maybe, maybe he's, he's a free man now. And handing out gift baskets and such, so. Yeah, well, or maybe it's a thing where, you know, like you, you break up with your girlfriend, you get in better shape, you yeah. kind of go into FU mode, you want to prove that maybe she said something, they had a fight and she said something, you know, did the old, <laughs> well, what do I care, you're washed up now anyway, and stormed <laughs> off, and he's like, oh, I'm not washed up, I'll show her. Like there, maybe maybe she was involved. She, she was like, your B-war leaves a lot to be, lot to be desired. <laughs> Your BIP is low for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> something might have happened. He's like, I'll show you. I'll show you my BIP. <laughs> you just watch for my war. My war is going to go way up. I'll show you. See if you yeah. can get that with Wild Wilmer Valderrama or whoever she's with now. <laughs> I think she dumped him. She's dating yeah. somebody else famous. Hold on. I'm going to Google this. This will be exciting. I actually know this. It's like Chris Evans or Chris somebody. I don't even know who he is. But oh, it can't be Chris Evans. It's He's Chris from Boston. Somebody. It is Chris Evans. He's I don't a know Boston what Chris kid. Evans is in, but I read it somewhere. He well, he's he's, he's in the Avengers. Or he's Captain America. Oh, he was? And he was in the the, the terrible Anna Ferris movie, What's My Number? That's secretly awesome. Oh, really? You watch that? Yeah, it's like a really solid bad cable movie. I recommend it. I'll check it out. Last year's bad watchable cable movie was that Drew Barrymore Justin Long movie where they dated cross country. Yeah. It was kind of secretly like watchable. Like... Yeah, it wasn't bad. And th- and this one is also kind of secretly watchable. I would have watched it by myself, but well, I when read you're throwing that, uh, bones to the wife, I think. Uh, yeah. Apparently, Minka had a bad breakup with Captain America. I think she broke up with him when Jeter got interested. She dropped him like a hot potato, and so he was a little wary of when she started calling and texting and Facebook messaging him again or whatever. But yeah. he decided to go back in the water, as it were. So I'm googling him because I I actually think he might be a hardcore asshole. Oh, that, he that is. would be hurtful. Oh, not hardcore. He's raised in Sudbury. Okay, so he's a well. He's mm, got to be a Red a, Sox fan, though, right? Upper class. Yeah, he went to Lincoln Sudbury High. So middle upper class Massachusetts kid, but that has to be a Red Sox fan. Wow. I don't, could, can a Red Sox fan date Minka Kelly? What's the ruling on that? Oh, I think he, yeah, I think that's a, that's a coup for him. That's a feather in his cap. Take that, Jeter. You don't have the Jeter sloppy seconds though. Well, but <laughs> take that, Jeter. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great if he was from like Roxbury or Dorchester or something. Yeah, then I'd be, then I'd feel like it was a legitimate. Uh, Every like character, he wanted to, every well, character like he, in the town. That would be awesome. <laughs> like he's Jeremy Renner in the yeah, town. That would be great. Where do you stand on the town? Uh, I liked it. I liked. I, I wish they'd blown up Fenway, but I liked the rest of it. Oh, Johnny. 
I think it was somewhat implausible. Like you know, they're, yeah. they have this wild manhunt for this for this uh, bank robber, this uh, bank robber, and he's able to escape just by wearing a T uniform. Yeah. Presumably, they would have known that his father drove a T for years. And maybe they should be on the lookout for somebody in that uniform. Since he it's a great a cop and a paramedic. Yeah, he had he had all these uniforms. He was like he was like Val Kilmer and the Saint crossed with a towny bank robber. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I. I think it's a. I really enjoyed it in the theater. I thought it was a great Boston movie, and uh, and it's been surprisingly rewatchable on cable. Yeah, I've seen it a couple. You could times jump on in. Cable. You could jump in at any point, and you'd be like, "Oh, here's the scene where they go and inexplicably beat up the other two guys in the apartment." Or here's this. Oh, they're gonna rob a bank this time. This will be fun. I liked um, it because it was in Charlestown, and he used to live there, and I enjoyed yeah. the places where we used to like walk by. Or I wish the store twenty four was involved, and the and we thank you guy, but. I, I enjoy that part of it. They also, they filmed in Old Sully's, which I was just, couldn't have been more titillated by. Whole scene in Old Sully's. Old Sully's, basically, we weren't allowed to go there. <laughs> really? You had to have actually, like, yeah, I never took you to Old Sully's. No, I, you took me to someplace Sully's, but that was the New no, Sully's. No, I took you, New Sully's. New oh, Sully's okay. was friendly to the outsiders. Old Sully's was, you had to grow up in Charlestown, basically. Oh, uh, it's just a local place. The, it was super local. Yeah. You were, you, it was not a good idea for us to go there. Um, yeah, no, it was that. It makes me think I miss Charlestown. We had some good times in Charlestown, Johnny. Absolutely. So we stumbled down a couple of hills. Totally. Yeah. Anyway, I I like that movie, and and uh, if if Chris Evans is doing the Jeremy Renner type of Massachusetts, then I fully support this Mika <laughs> Kelly thing. Like if it, if this is all leading to him running into Jeter at a party and maybe getting a fist fight and going all Massachusetts on him, I'm all for it. You know, it would be the perfect revenge. Then would be for. <laughs> Jeter to date Bridget Moynihan. Oh, wow. How about that? Oh, Johnny. Oh, you know, she'd probably be up for it. Totally be up for it. She, maybe Brady he, probably he, doesn't care, though, but, you know. You know who would stop that? My man Donnie Wahlberg. He wouldn't allow that. <laughs> no, he'd stop He's it. on the set of Blue Bloods. He'd sabotage it somehow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the, the greatest thing on television for the last two years has been Ultimate diehard Boston sports fan Donnie Wahlberg having to appear in scenes with Bridget Moynihan as his sister. That's fantastic. I did not it's, know that. I've, oh, yeah. And Tom Selleck's in that, too, right? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Who has darker hair than, uh, than Donnie Wahlberg. <laughs> Is, they're using, like, entire vats of shoe polish for his hair and his mustache. It's pretty nice. fantastic. The ageless Tom Selleck. So what is your prediction for – let's look at the standings here. So you are – you are in a dead heat. It is. We are taping this on a Wednesday, yeah. September twelfth. A dead heat with the Baltimore Orioles. Two yeah. games ahead of the Tampa Bay Rays. Right. You're 16 ahead of the Red Sox. So congratulations. Yeah, I think, there. I think that's safe. Yeah. You have a oh pretty sizable lead over the Tigers. Five games. That's for the wild card. Trailing the Oakland A's by two. Unbelievable. Really, really unbelievable. Wow. I don't get this Oakland A's thing at all. It's no. like Moneyball was like dead and buried. Yeah. It's and now all of a sudden it's back. It's got a hand up through the ground now. I also thought that the Suspedes signing was going to be like one of the all time bad signings. You know, like just yeah. like along the lines of uh, Hideki Arabu or something. <laughs> wow, yeah. Just like a complete catastrophe from day one. He's been pretty good. But Josh uh, Reddick's been good for them, right? Got twenty something home runs. Yeah, he cooled off big time second like half. Like two hundred though. though, I think, since the all since the all yeah. break. But he had the old regression. They lost back. Bartolo Colon, and it didn't bother them at the slightest. No, if anything, it was a, a, a probably a, a distraction that they eliminated from the rest of the team because of all the PEDs in his locker. <laughs> People were worried about calling their agents and lawyers about being accomplices. Subbing, Am I an accomplice if I have the locker next to his? Stubbing their toe on a syringe or something. Yeah, it's problematic. Yeah. So it really sounds like you locked out. I'm disappointed. I thought you'd be more angry. I was you know, I'll, I'll be honest have... with you. It, there was a collapse in 2004 that was much, much more calamitous to me than, than that. So yes. It, basically, it's like if you've lived through that horror, then you're basically this one. I mean, I know it's a collapse and a choke and yada, yada, all true, but... It's not a collapse and a choke to your biggest rival who hasn't won a World Series in 86 years, which I'll I'll never, ever live down. So mm. I, that was a collapse that really, like, you know, ruined me almost. So I made it through that, and, uh, you know, now there's this collapse. But 
I, I, I can't compare to that one. If it was the Red Sox, I'd be out on a ledge right now or, like, living in a lean-to in the woods or something, howling at the moon. But, you know, the Orioles and the Rays and, you know, this Yankees team is, is not that great and built for a long run. So, you know, I, I, it's not even a matter of being panicked. It's the, the levels of grief. I, I'm at acceptance. So I've accepted mm. it. And Jeez. if they pleasantly surprise me with a comeback and they move on, we'll pretend this conversation never happened. But for now, it's like whatever. Does it sting a little that they weren't able to unload A. Rod's contract to the Dodgers? <laughs> it stings a lot. I hope they're. I hope the phone still works in the off season. Hey, if you're taking on dead weight, we've got some for you. Hey, Magic. <laughs> ever heard of a guy named Alex Rodriguez? Exactly. He's a star. You must have heard of him. He's still good. Puts people you should in the take seats. him. He loves Hollywood. He loves L.A. He's not Got making that much. In the entertainment community. Yeah. He's a perfect L.A. guy. Actually, A. Rod would be a perfect Dodger. Totally. He would. He would be good. He'd be an interesting move for them. It'd be either either Miami, where he's from, to go back to the Marlins, or he'd be such a good L.A. guy. His girlfriend, you know, wrestling. She's probably trying to break into the movies or something, right? Which girlfriend now? Isn't there, wasn't he date Tori Wilson or somebody? Is she like a wrestler? Or a... He dates Tori Wilson? I think so. The WWE diva? I'm pretty sure. I can... we you this... you, you're in the center of like the Hollywood community, and I have to inform you of like who Minka Kelly's dating. And I'm here in Connecticut. I couldn't be farther away from the entertainment <laughs> capital of the world, and I'm fair... informing you of these things. Very fair points. I, 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 in my defense, I did spend a, a month in a foreign country. I missed a that's lot good, of stuff. That's a good point. That's a good point. Missed a lot of things. That explains um... your Seahawks in the Super Bowl pick, too, I guess. I, I, I don't think I'm not going to be using that excuse this week, John, in, in the week two column. You know, I, I read your whole football preview thing, and you picked the Seahawks, and you're in love with Wilson and everything, but it, never once did you mention that Pete Carroll was their coach, someone you wrote an entire article comparing him to Fredo from The Godfather. <laughs> this is a really good point. <laughs> did, that, did you forget about that? <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I mean, he did win a couple national titles at USC. College, but not in the, I was thinking the maybe NFL he's a little record bloomer. is a little spotty. Think how many Doc Rivers columns I wrote when Doc <laughs> and Doc finally turned it around. That's a good point. You I thought maybe Pete had had a Doc Rivers turnaround. Nice. All right, I'll give you that. It's a very fair point. Hey, listen, it's not my proudest moment. <laughs> um, we're gonna learn from it. We're gonna, gonna make some on. positives. Yeah, I should have taken the Niners. I'm kicking myself. I it, mean, it was you, between those two. I've just figured you'd pick the Patriots for the fifth. Straight year. That's what America was expecting, frankly. Well, I couldn't do that because you didn't want to jinx them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I took Gronkowski in my the first round of my fantasy league. Oh, I did too. I have him in both leagues. Yeah, I'm excited for him. And I bought my son a Gronk jersey. Nice. Yeah, it really kind of fits his personality too. He's a little rough and tumble, and he's missing a tooth. He's got a crew cut. He's missing a tooth. He's wearing a Gronk jersey. It's good. Nice. It's good. He already has more muscle than I do. Um, <laughs> any last things we have to cover? I don't think there is. No, that about covers that. You can call me in a TV? couple weeks. What's that? Any TV? No, you no. I did get four supportive tweets that four other people in America watch Hell on Wheels, so that made me feel good. It's not just oh. me and Common; it's four other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, my wife, Common, and four people on Twitter. But you're not watching Homeland. I, I've not caught up with that yet no i'm behind you know it's, it seems like such a project when you I, first of all i have two young kids so that that keeps right. me occupied and then to sit down and like catch up on a past season with dvds the winter's coming that's more of like a winter thing i gotta sure. enjoy the nice outdoors while we have it my mother mother-in-law for my birthday bought me season one of boardwalk empire which is right up my alley so i, I do have that to watch but Homeland okay. is on my list, and I see the commercials for it, and I always say, "Oh yeah, Bill raves about that." So, mm-hmm. my wife's intrigued. We'll 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 get into that. Well, when you said winter's coming, you also could have been talking about the 2012 New York Yankees. <laughs> yes, winter's coming early. Yeah. Jacko, as always, a pleasure. All we'll right. Talk to you soon. You too, buddy. Take care. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. I get the sun off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. 
All right, fans, by now you should know that millions of fans use StubHub and the StubHub app to find the seats they want to games, concerts, and more. But one thing you may not know is that you can also go on StubHub to set a price alert. That means you choose where you want to sit and the price you want to pay. Then if another fan lists tickets for sale within your price range, StubHub will email to let you know. Pretty great, huh? So head to StubHub today to get your tickets or the app to set a price alert. You can't go wrong. StubHub!